Ah, uh, yes. Modern. What a terrifying sight for newcomers. But... Why is that? For those who are unfamiliar with Street Fighter 6, let me explain what modern is. Modern is simply put, a control type for Street Fighter 6 that composes of uh, three attack buttons as opposed to the six attack buttons on Classic and a special button. With the rest of the buttons composing of uh, a uh, auto button, a drive impact button, a drive parry button, and a drive throw button. Oh wait, no, it's just a, it's just a throw button. Now there are two buttons we're gonna be focusing on. It would be the auto and special button. Both of these buttons are exclusive to modern controls. The auto button, when mashed alongside with a normal button, will automatically do no. combos for you. But the more important button, the special button, allows you to do specials with one button. And supers too. Well, it's more like two buttons, but you, you know what I mean. But where did the idea of modern controls come from? Most would point to Super Smash Bros. There are certainly differences though. Focusing on the special button, with the special button in Smash Bros, Ryu can do a Hadouken with neutral special, a Tatsu with side special, a Shoryuken with up special, and down special would be his focus attack. In Street Fighter 6, it's quite different, actually. His neutral special is still a Hadouken, but his back special is now the Tatsu, his forward special is his Shoryuken, and his down special is his Donkey Kick. But what if I told you there was another game that came after Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U that has a control scheme that more closely resembles Street Fighter 6's modern controls? Allow me to introduce to you, Street Fighter 4. Ultra Street Fighter 4! No, no wait, no wait, not that, not that Street Fighter 4. Uh, look, look, look down, look down, you, you see that? Yeah, Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition. And yes, it's on mobile. Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition, released in 2017, and was a completely uh, rebuilt version of Street Fighter 4, specifically made for mobile. For only $5, you get a sizable portion of the Street Fighter 4 roster, along with your standard modes like an arcade mode, a training mode, and even some online stuff. The online's pretty dead, by the way, it's uh... It's not very active. Though what may really interest you is the controls. As you can see, there's only four buttons. There's a punch button, a kick button, a focus button, and an SP button. The punch and kick buttons are obvious enough. I mean, you press the punch button and you punch, and when you press the kick button, you let your opponent smell your dirty feet. I mean, you're you you kick and the focus button lets you do a focus attack but that sp button right there may be less obvious you might think that's uh, where i'm gonna break up the uh, like modern buttons and stuff but that's not its primary function actually it actually functions as an ex button if you do an actual input along with the sp button you get an ex move it also has a secondary function called sp move assist SP Move Assist does share a lot of similarities to modern controls. First of all, both of these buttons are called the SP buttons, and they also share the same default button spot in both Street Fighter games. Most characters with SP Move Assist function very similarly to their modern controlled counterparts, as you can see with Ryu. But that's not all. Charged characters also function very similarly to their Street Fighter 6 counterparts. The final thing I'd like to mention is that sweeps also have a similar input to sweeps done on modern controls. There are also one button supers. Now you might be asking, where's the button? Look up. No, not 
that up. I meant by up. Yep, that's right. The bars themselves function as the buttons for supers and ultras. And yes, you did just see a one button raging demon. I mean, most players will be playing the game on a touch screen. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Which is probably why there isn't any. Using Martin specials, you lose a sizable 20% of the attack's damage. Which may not seem like much, but if you take Zangief and cut his health down to 80%, you'll see that it, it's still not much, honestly. Though in a game like Street Fighter, that 20% can be the difference between winning a round and giving your opponent a chance to come back. While you won't notice it much while using specials, supers on the other hand have a much more noticeable difference in damage. The 80% damage penalty also applies to chip damage, so using modern attacks against a burned out opponent may not be so effective. This weakness of Mon should be the most easiest to explain. But why does that 20% damage reduction exist? The answer lies in explaining the benefits of Modern. What? Modern allows new players to remove two of the most daunting problems they have, the sky, and having to do a DP input. For higher level players, it allows them to allocate their mental stack to more important things, like footsies. Easy instant dive kicks are cool too, I guess. And if you're really good, you could EX DP through fireballs. Your character doesn't have a DP? Uh... Uh, but do not worry, every character has a super. And that also means every character has some. Unlike DP, supers are a little more versatile. You could basically use it to catch almost anything. Mashing, fireballs, and more. All with one button. Actually, it's two. Doesn't matter. One character that really benefits from modern is Luke. Yes, the poster boy himself. All of his supers have some sort of utility to them. His level two has fireball invincibility. Hey Ryu, you wanna know something? What? Ishmo baby. What the hell? <laughs> It also comes out really fast, but it does not have a lot of range. Ooh, that's kind of small. His level 1, on the other hand, he could just go... Nuh -uh! He has a pretty standard level 3. It does move him forward, and that does mean he can catch opponents throwing fireballs. Damn, I suck. You know what I also suck? Wait, what? Auto combos! As you can see here, just mashing a few buttons can get you an automatic combo on modern. Despite their ease of use, there is no scaling added onto them. When done on block, the auto combo stops at a certain point. Which also means if the combo uses a super bar, it won't be used if blocked. This makes auto combos a safe option to dish out some damage. If a modern player feels confident enough, they can also do the actual inputs, which completely removes the damage penalty. Which means modern players can do combos that do similar damage to classic combos. Now you might think that's a lot for, you know, a 20% damage penalty. No, I wasn't done talking yet. But before we talk more, you like hearing me talk. 
No? If you said yes, then maybe consider liking my video. That's it. I, I want you to subscribe. I don't wanna... I don't wanna mess with your subscription box. Anyways, uh, what else do we have to talk about? Playing on modern means sacrificing a ton of moves. There are all kinds of missing moves, and they're all dependent on the character. Some missing moves can be a detriment to a character. Some others, uh, not as much. Characters on modern can be missing normals, and, well, somewhat, maybe, specials also. But how bad can losing them be? Why don't we take a look at a missing move that is very important for a certain character. Ryu standing heavy kick. Yeah, I know I'm bringing up Ryu again. He's like my main, so uh, of course I know a lot about him. He's also a very simple character, so explaining his standing heavy kick shouldn't be that bad. Ryu's standing heavy kick is by far one of his most important normals that he's missing on modern. Its high damage means it's a strong punish counter starter and a strong combo tool. This is one of the more extreme examples of missing a normal, and once again, varies between characters. Some normals aren't really missing though, and are just locked behind something. Some normals are only accessible with auto combos. Some characters lose direct access to their crouching light punches, having to do their crouching light kick before doing their crouching light punch. This can severely weaken some characters' light confirms. That covers most of the missing normals on many characters. But there's a kind of normal attack that every character is missing three of. Aerials. Every character is missing at least a one aerial normal for each strength, those of which can range from cross-up attacks to deep reaching heavy attacks. Missing these moves can severely limit a character's approach options. Some characters also rely on air normals for their most optimal combos. If we compare this to what modern can do, it's really not that great. Wait a second, go back. Did you notice something? Why did I use EX instead of heavy here? Oh yeah, he doesn't have it. You know how I mentioned that specials were kind of missing on modern controls? What I actually meant was that certain strengths of special moves were missing. Once again, Ryu seems to get the short end of the stake when it comes to missing moves. One of his strongest combo enders is his heavy donkey kick. It can be done into a combo that leads to a safe jump, it's a part of his most optimal combo, and it's also a strong combo starter. Meanwhile, modern Ryu only has medium donkey kick and light too, but that's locked behind an auto combo. Speaking of moves that are locked behind auto combo, Marissa has a move that's just completely locked behind an auto combo. A move by the name of Quadriga. A strong poking tool because of its forward advancing properties, but completely missing as a raw option on modern. This is somewhat of a downside for a character that needs to be up in your face, but hey, at least it's a part of your heavy auto combo. Also, speaking of auto combos, again, why don't we talk about them? Let's keep it short, shall we? Auto combos suck. Also, I lied. Let me explain. Auto combos have many issues. Some of the issues include, some of them are easy to replicate on classic, some of the combos use drive meter even on block, a few of them are unsafe on block, and some of them 
are all of the above. Only a small portion of auto combos don't fit in any of these categories, so it might be a little hard to figure out their weaknesses. All this plus the fact that there are combos that do significantly more damage for only a little bit more effort, and even meterless, is why auto combos suck. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Less effort equals less reward, but that's enough for modern's weaknesses. So even with all this, you may be wondering, why does modern even exist in the first place? I mean, besides, you know, getting newer players into the game, there are some tools in Street Fighter 6 that may justify modern's existence. Let me explain what those tools are. It's over, Luke. You're cornered. And what makes you think that? What are you? Don't try it. I don't know if you realize this, but Street Fighter 6 has many, many tools for a player to use, and with many tools comes many solutions. And a few of these tools stand from the rest, like, for example, Drive Parry, or more specifically. Perfect parry. Perfect parry is powerful because you can use it on any attack. So it kind of doubles as an anti-air and a reversal. But it's kind of challenging because you have to time the parry correctly. And you could get thrown for trying to use it. So let's get on to the more easier options. You might be quite familiar with drive impact. If you're at a lower level, this is a great option for multiple situations. If your opponent spams jump in combos, they can get caught off guard if you just use it as an anti-error. It's also an auto combo killer. If your opponent is getting a little spammy with their auto combos, you could use this as a way to deter them from their barrage. Of course, once you reach the middle part of the ranks, it won't be as useful. So why not try drive reversaling? It's completely invincible and not susceptible to throws. If your opponent blocks it, it is a little unsafe for you, but hey, that's assuming your opponent can't even punish you at all. Also, during the big balance patch that's coming up, they're going to make Drive Reversal a wake-up option. So now everyone has an easy reversal. Though I guess one of the massive downsides is that, well... You had to spend two bars, and you're only doing gray damage. But I mean, no, oh, it, it doesn't even really matter as a newer player, does it? Plus, it's easier to punish an EXDP anyway. The final thing I want to bring up does not have anything to do with the drive system. As you can see, you can use normals as an anti-air. Nearly every character has one. And for some of them, that anti-air normal might be their only anti-air. Of course, it's much worse than using a DP. It doesn't reach as high as an uppercut. It's slow, has no air invincibility. Which means you'll trade with air normals a lot. Or you get hit for reacting too late. But the lack of needing to do an input is that you can focus on seeing if your opponent's feet have left the ground. Plus, using a normal anti-air might be better in some situation. Like if your opponent jumps far away from your DP range. Or if you're a charge character that doesn't have enough charge for your anti-air. Many air normals can be used as an anti-air too. They're usually faster, but do less damage. But they can still trade. Because of that, they're reserved for beating cross-ups. I'd like to also take the time to mention the actually easy anti-airs that exist in the game. Like Rashid's spinning mixer, which uses a pretty easy Hadouken input, and Zangief's Lariat. It's literally just two buttons. And of course, charged characters. With the existence of all these tools, you can kind of see why Modern was implemented into Street Fighter 6. But even with all this, I can see why people think that Modern players have it easy. But what if I told you that them having it easy means you have it easy too? There are lots of things that Modern players can spam. 
But because they're using modern, that means you can replicate it in training mode and learn some things from it without really having to know how a character works. Are they spamming auto combos? Replicate that and find a gap in their offense. Are they spamming a ton of special moves? Replicate that and find out which one you can punish them for spamming. What if you don't want to hit up training mode? Well, first of all, hitting up training mode for a tiny bit can uh, really help you. And second of all, just DI. Drive Impact is a really good tool for dealing with spamming. But what if they're playing very defensively and DP you for trying to jump in? Or many other situations that might be hard to replicate in training mode. Well, we all have a little thing we have access to called the, um... The internet? There are probably tons of guides on how to play against a certain kind of player. But what if you're trying to just jump in and play some games and have fun? Then why are you playing on Classic? You like the feeling of learning? Then just learn! Jeez! But you might be wondering, why should I be learning? If these modern players have to learn so much less than me, while also producing similar results for less effort. Well, I'll tell you what my stance is within the conclusion of this video. My conclusion is that Modern is absolutely a fair and a fun addition to Street Fighter 6. But yet, even after a year, there are people that are still complaining about Modern and how it's like bad for new players that are playing on Classic. But I honestly see it as just another hurdle that everyone had to jump past. I heard people talk about how they should be separating the queues for Modern and Classic and Ranked. Which I think that's not a good idea at all. Modern was made to be fair and balanced. Which for some people sounds pretty bad. Honestly though, if you find modern annoying, then that's not gonna be the only thing you're gonna find annoying. You'll find that certain playstyles and characters might annoy you. And because of that, you might be losing to them a lot. You might think modern is the only thing that's keeping you from winning a lot, but... Actually, you'll eventually find out that may not be the case. If seeing that Lair M riles you up, then you might have just already lost. But even then, honestly, losing is a very important part of ranking up in Street Fighter. And as long as you come to terms with the fact that you've lost a match, you would probably be able to find some uh, problems with your gameplay. And once you see your problems, you can kind of learn from them. If anything, Modern helps you learn about certain things a little quicker. And I don't mean by using Modern, I meant by fighting against Modern. You can learn to play around fireballs, anti-airs, turtling. But apparently some of you all aren't willing to learn. When I was playing Geef, I kept seeing people walk into my effective range for some reason. A lot, even if they have a fireball. Like seriously, when are you guys gonna learn? And that's just like one of the reasons why I think separating a classic and modern from ranked is a bad idea. Plus, it's ranked, which means that it's supposed to simulate an actual match in a tournament. And modern is in fact tournament legal. Plus, ranked is supposed to, you know, rank your skill level. If you lose to a modern player on the same rank as you, then there might just be a reason you lost. And because they're on the same skill level as you, that means there's a chance you could win. I mean, wouldn't it be satisfying to just beat a certain playstyle that you would usually lose to? Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is... It's... It's okay to lose. 
You might go on a humongous losing streak, you might get angry. Perhaps Street Fighter 6 just isn't the game for you. Or perhaps you just need a little bit of a break. Learning is just a part of the process of getting good at something. Sure, modern players get access to easy specials and also easy supers, but even then, they're kind of in the same boat. They still have to learn how those tools are used. I'm not even really a modern player, I just feel like people deserve to play the way they want to. You can choose to play classic, and they can choose to play modern. Ridiculing people for just choosing something, especially if it's like not even like broken or anything, is kind of kind of feels scrubby. Of course, you can hate on modern, hate on certain characters. I mean, I'm kind of guilty of that too. But ultimately, words don't translate into skill or wins. As I said, modern players are just another hurdle for you to jump over. Maybe you should just play the game have fun, and try not to get too angry. And if you do get too angry, you could all just get off a of Street Fighter. The game isn't going anywhere, and next thing you know, you'll be back. That time you spend playing, you'll just keep getting better. Just enjoy the journey, man. In other words... Play Street Fighter 6 and get off of Twitter, you dumbass! Hey yo, what up, it's Puppy, and thank you for finishing this video. It, uh, it took a while to make, it was, uh, it was a little bit rough. It's, it's currently nighttime, it's really dark, holy crap, I am so tired. But I was, I, of course, worked really hard on this video, it was, yeah, it was, I was procrastinating mo for most of it, but hey, uh, I tried. This video was mostly made for, like, you know, uh, speaking my mind, first of all, and second of all, uh, I kind of wanted to really try hard on a video for once and uh, see how it would go, and hopefully use that knowledge for future videos. I'm not even planning to just, like, you know, make this sort of content forever. I'm just, I'm planning to, like, uh, fo mostly focus on gameplay videos. I am aiming to release this before Akuma comes out so I can, like, stream, like, after that, you know, uh, and it's, it's literally the day before Akuma comes out, I think, right now. Yeah, it is. Honestly, I don't know if I completely enjoyed making this video. Once again, I want to focus on more gameplay stuff, but even then, I, I mean, it was kind of, I had some bits in there that I thought was pretty funny, I guess, but I'm not very good at comedy, maybe, or at least, like, up with content like this, I, I'm not very good at making. Hopefully, uh, all this stuff I learned uh, while making this video can carry on to my future videos. And once again, I don't really want you to subscribe to, <laughs> to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, oh crap. I'm doing this live right now, so I'm not... I'm not gonna be... Yeah, oh crap. But a like will suffice if you actually enjoyed the video, because I'm not quite sure if you would enjoy my other content yet, and uh, I'd rather you find me and recommend it again someday. I'm planning to crank up the YouTube video creation uh, stuff a little bit, but uh, who knows? Who knows what'll happen? Uh, it'll, I'll probably come up with like a Akuma video soon, because he is my main from Street Fighter V, and I, uh, I really want to play him right now, honestly, yeah. Uh, but as soon as Akuma comes out, I'm probably gonna stream, and hopefully I'll make that into a YouTube video, and that, that, that might be good. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Also, I later found out after uh, making the Street Fighter 4 mobile part that uh, there is a Street Fighter 4 mobile has existed for a very long time. Actually, it actually started in the first one. It actually came out in like 2011. So, um, oops, I was uh, too lazy to change that part. But uh, whatever, man. It doesn't. My point still stands, anyways. Whatever. Also, feel free to put your thoughts in the comments down below. What you like about the video, what you dislike about it, it could really help. Anyways, that's all I really have to say now. So, uh, I'll see you guys next time, if you guys find me and you're recommended. Good, good night, I have to go to sleep, man, I'm, I'm so tired. Uh.